episiotomies are sort of a controversial issue because they come in and out of favor over the course of several decades. And people often come into the office and they say, I don't want an episiotomy. What do I do to avoid one? And I always sort of like to educate people about them a little bit because episiotomies are not always a bad thing and some women absolutely need them and some women don't. And I think it's important to understand the history a little bit about why we started doing them and for women to understand why we do them before they say, I absolutely don't want one. Um, if you read a book on midwifery that goes back to like 14 or 1500s, it's fascinating. Um, many, many years ago, before we had the ability to do episiotomies and there were only home births and no hospitals and no suture material, women just delivered at home and tore. And 50% of women who tore, meaning, and an episiotomy is basically just for people who don't know what it is. It's a cut that's made between the area between the vagina and the rectum, what's called the perineum. And it's made with a pair of scissors to allow more room for the head to deliver. And the idea behind the episiotomy is to protect certain tissues in that area. We don't want to tear the anal sphincter. We don't want to tear into the rectum. So we try to cut the vaginal tissue and the skin and protect the more critical structures that prevent women from being incontinent. So if you go back to 14, 1500s, when women delivered at home with midwives or assistants, what would happen was people tore because there were were no cuts, they just tore spontaneously. And 50% of women had incontinence issues. And interestingly, one of the midwifery books that I had read in the beginning of my career actually said that women used to wear perfumed satchels under their very large dresses in the 1500s to hide the urinary and fecal smells that came because they were incontinent. So out of this sort of social issue grew um, the need for an episiotomy. And as, you know, suture material developed and um, suit and scissors and you know the the field of obstetrics developed we started cutting episiotomies routinely and the concept of cutting them routinely was to prevent incontinence and when we developed suture material we started repairing the tears and sphincters that developed so we actually prevented incontinence so for, for a period of time everyone had an episiotomy and it was to protect the you know, the issue of incontinence to protect the sphincters, to protect the tissue. Now, what's wrong with doing it on everyone is 50% of the women who delivered didn't need that. So a routine episiotomy is not the correct way to go, obviously, because then you're cutting tissue on 50% of women who don't need it. But on the other hand, you don't want to just say, I don't want one, because for the women who do potentially tear healthy tissue that can protect this, you know, that, that, the healthy tissue that's sphincter related, you don't want to tear that. So really what I tell people is you need someone to make an individual decision based on how large your baby's head is. Is it coming through the perineum with, with good stretching? And it's controversial whether there are things that people can do that are going to help. I mean, mo you know, help the baby's head come through without tearing. Most of the time with a first delivery, it, the tissue is not that distensible. A smaller baby will obviously fit through a lot Easy, more easily than a larger baby. Um, we do, you know, do some massage and stretching. We use lubrication when babies deliver. We, you know, we have stuff called Surgilube, which is similar to KY jelly, and we put that on the baby's head and the perineum when the baby delivers, and that's helpful. But sometimes we can, and sometimes there is a little room needed, and the concept of the episiotomy is that we cut around the vital tissue and the sphincter and the rectum to allow more room without tearing into those tissues because we don't want to have incontinence issues. And while we do have suture material obviously now and we can repair those structures, on rare occasions the, the healing process is imperfect and people can develop problems with it or not have perfect continence even after a good repair. So obviously, you know, it's an individual basis and you have to understand that the episiotomy grew out of a need to prevent incontinence issues many many years ago so an individual decision based on you know the mom the baby the room that's required and what's happening during the labor is really really a key issue